In the 1950s, psychologist Solomon Ash carried out a series of studies investigating conformity. In the core experiment, participants were placed in groups with six other people. In each case, the groups were told they were taking part in tests on vision. In reality, only one member of each group was an innocent participant. The other six were collaborators of the experimenter. The groups were given a series of variations on the same simple visual test and asked to give their answers out loud one at a time. Here's an example of the kind of visual test used. Which of the three lines on the right is the same length as line X on the left? A, B or C? You'd agree that the answer is pretty easy to spot. In our particular example, line C is the same length as line X. Ash's experiment actually confirmed how easy such tests were. If participants were allowed to give their answers in private, they gave a correct answer to the questions 98% of the time. As the experiments progressed, the six collaborators gave the obvious and correct answer to each question unanimously. The lone naive participant, positioned so as to give his answers last, would also give the same obvious and correct answer almost always. In group situations where the collaborators did not deliberately give wrong answers and no pressure to conform was artificially generated, only one participant in 35 gave an incorrect answer, just under 3%. However, in the later stages of the experiments, when the six collaborators all deliberately gave the wrong answer to the key questions as agreed with the experimenter in advance, the percentage of incorrect answers given by the naive participant leapt to 32%. Only 25% of participants never conformed in any of their answers. Interestingly, the naive participant was less likely to give an incorrect answer if just one of the six collaborators gave a dissenting answer that was different to the other five, even if this dissenting answer was in itself incorrect. The apparent readiness of Ash's participants to give answers that conformed with the obviously wrong answers of their peers has commonly been taken to show the extent to which people are subject to group influence. Some psychologists have questioned the validity of Asher's findings. In the original experiment, all the participants were male students of similar age, which may mean the sample group was biased. Also, it might be necessary to factor in the prevailing social attitudes of the time and place in which Asher's experiment took place. 1950s America was a time when conservative social attitudes dominated individuals' lives more powerfully than they did decades later. For instance, psychologists Perrin and Spencer replicated the experiment in the UK in 1980 and in 1981. Only a quarter of a percent of participants conformed with their incorrect peers. In 1996, psychologists Smith and Bond performed a meta-analysis of 133 ASH-type studies conducted in 17 different countries. Their results not only demonstrated less general conformity in their participants than those who took Asher's tests over 40 years earlier, they also suggested that conformity was subject to cross-cultural variation. For instance, in Japan, participants in the experiments were more likely to conform than in places such as Brazil and Holland. Smith and Bond themselves admit that the issue of cross-cultural variation is a complex one and that the results of their experiments require careful interpretation. Nonetheless, their continued research into the area of conformity and that of others has brought into question the results of Ash's seminal study.